when you've got the box off, this is how it comes in the frame. Here, along the top, we've got three 10 mil nuts. Spin it round. On the other side, on the bottom, we've got another three 10 mil nut. We take those off. Once they're off, the top lifts off. You should have, when you open it up, the box. We'll open that up in a minute. That's got all your bits. Back wheels are on, but the tyres are flat, so they want pumping up. And at the back, you can see here, there's two clamps that hold the quad down. So same again, 10 mil. Mm. Yeah. Throw them away. Also, you've got a front bumper, which we put on right near the end. And the front wheels, just pull them out. They're pumped up. But just check them to see that they are pumped up. Strip the plastic off. Handlebars come, everything's done. Just have to make sure you put them on the right way because sometimes the wires are twisted at the front. Yep, right. Once we've uh, lifted the quad out of the box, that can go. And underneath the quad, you'll find two plastic plates. One will go there, one will go there. They're both the same, so you can put them either way, it don't matter. So when you get your box, you open it up, you'll find the manual, the set of keys, which will go through when we put it together. The charger. You'll have a bag of tools, and in the tool bag, there are nuts and bolts. And also, in the box, there are nuts and bolts. So what we usually do is keep those bolts separate from these, because they do the black. First job we do, lift the seat out. It's got a hook on the front of the seat. You hook under the front of the petrol tank, and then put it in. That's the seat done. I always start at the back, which is pump the tyres up. Yeah, 20 psi. 20 psi. You'll find the dust caps in the box with all the tools. On the back, underneath the seat, there's four bolts. There's one either side on both sides. Yeah. You can see one there, one yeah. there. We take those off. There. One. Once you took them off, go into your box, and you'll find two large brackets. Now the brackets have got a bend on them, so you have to make sure you put them on the right way. So if you're looking at the back of the bike, that bends to the left on the right hand side, one on the right, left bends to the right, if it's on underneath. So the bracket you've just took off, you put that behind and into the bracket and then screw it back into place. Now we don't tighten them up first, we put the other side on because we've got to move that when we put a plastic on the top. Now if you look, go into the box you'll find four plastic spaces, there's two, another two in the box. So you undo the nut and the bolt on both of them. Now underneath, they slot on to the tops, there, like that. Turn it over, put your bolt through, and then that bolts to a hole here. So that goes through that hole like that, and it bolts underneath. Same on the other side, into there. They might not line up, so you might have to pull them a bit just to line the bolts up. Two nuts and bolts, Allen keys they are, with a 10 mil nut. They go through the top, there, and into the bracket underneath there. So they line up there, and they tighten that. Same on the other side, they tighten up. So we need a, you've got Allen keys in the tool bag, 
obviously I'll be using my own tool. Put it in and tighten them up. And once you've tightened those, the bolts underneath that you put on earlier are loose, you tighten them up. So you just Get them both right on both sides. Yeah, and that's the back of the quad done. Right, so if we move around to the front, in the bag that you had inside the box, when you empty it, you'll find a bolt that's not threaded right to the end. Now we have got bolts in here that's threaded to the end, but they're for the angle bars, they're smaller. So the bolts that's not got the full thread on, and the nylon nut goes into the suspension at the bottom. So lift your suspension up, line your bolt through, and nut on the back. Now that's a 12 and a 13 mil. The nuts are 12 mil. The bolts are 12 mil, sorry, and the nuts are 13. And we just tighten them up. So once you've got the suspension on, you can put the wheel on. Now, it doesn't matter which way the wheels go. On some quads it does, but on this one it doesn't. So push the wheel on and all we've got in the box <coughs> is another 19mm nylon nut, self-locking. Put that on, suck it. Tightly it up. Then also you'll have a little black cap that goes over the top of the wheel nut and it's on. Simple as that. The next bit on the quad is the front brake. So the front brake is inside, so you need to pull it from the back behind the suspension to the front. And all it does goes onto the disc and then you line the two holes up just here. And in your bag you've got some short Allen keys bolts. Through the hole, this is fiddly. Same with the bottom one, line the bottom one up. That's one brake. Do exactly the same on the other side. Your long bolt into your suspension. And your 12 and 13 mil spanner. Wheel on. Then you've got left side suspension. Uh, Brake. Brake. <laughs> we we'll move on to the front plastic. It goes on the top and that is the five millimeter allen key and a 10 mil nut underneath it take those off put them to one side for a minute front bracket that we just took the bolts out of and behind it is two holes where it sits in put the bolts back through the holes and underneath there's a metal bracket and the two bolts you took out of the front bracket go back in. All right, after that, we'll move on to the front bumper. The front of the quad is four bolts, two at the top, two at the bottom. We need to take those out. At the top, you've got two holes, at the bottom, two holes. The large bolts go through the bumper and into the two holes at the top. There. And we'll put the nut on the back, but we don't tighten it because the bottom two are sometimes tight. We put the nut in and you've just got a little bit 
I've just got a little bit of a bolt on, on the back to get the nut onto it. Also in the box, you will have two plastic grommets. And they fit in the end. Also in the box, you'll have a fuse or two fuses, as you can see here. Come round to the side of the front wheel on the left, you'll see a red plastic box. That's where you insert the fuse. It'll snap at you when you first do it, but don't jump. There you go. Push the lid down. That's it. Also in there, the key that was in the box earlier, if you look underneath again, that's the speed module. So you've got low, high, medium. Twist it to whichever setting that you want. Then you can take the key out. Simple on this, the handlebars just sit on the, the frame at the top. You've got a clamp with four bolts. And they just sit over the handlebars and bolt down to the clamp. There we are. Again, these are 10 mil bolts. So we can find a 10 mil socket. We just tighten them up. Make sure the handlebars are right, and then you can tighten it, hold them in place. Put all four bolts in so they're just tightening up. Otherwise, if you tighten one down, you won't get the other side in because it will tilt. So once you've tightened all four, just grab all the handlebars and give it a pull up and down. You see, that's not tight enough, so you don't need that movement. So just tighten it a bit more until they're... There, that's better. Right, also, your brakes will be loose. They move both sides. So set them how you want them, then get your 5 mil Allen key. Not too tight, you just have to nip them so they don't move. Throttle a bit, you see that throttle, it's sticking because it's been pushed on too far. So you'll have a little Allen key in your tool set underneath the throttle. A little hole with an allen key in it. Just undo it, pull the throttle out just a touch, not a lot, tighten it back up. There you go, and that's free. You have a set of keys that's tie wrapped. So snip them off, put them in. When you turn it, your light should come on. Make sure that the brake lights work because if the brake lights don't work, it means the connection's not connected somewhere. And when you put the brake on, it automatically shuts the motor off. Now, if the brake light don't come on, it won't shut the motor off and it will keep going. So that's one thing to check on safety wise. Apart from that, everything's done. Good to go. Right, so Russ has just finished uh, building the MRF Mega Elite 48 volt quad bike. So I'm just gonna go through inspection, check on it. I've done a full nut and bolt check. So again, if you've got someone else in your house, I'll just do it. It's better to have four eyes looking over it than two. So you've got all your nuts and bolts anywhere from your handlebar once it's done, all the way through to these foot wells, to your battery holding case. Uh, your wheel wheels are already on, but just check them. Your holding ones, your motor, your brake calipers. Full nut and bolt check needs to be done. You need to check this in your manual as well, because if not, it'll avoid your warranty, especially if you're doing a self-assembly on it. If you're paying for the assembly, we'll have obviously already done it. A few other questions, we always ask, where's it charged? So under here, you've got, so always remember, as, as you sit on it, it's the right side and the keys, there's a little port there. Another couple of hints and tips for this quad in particular, if you ever have to push it for whatever reason, don't push it whilst it's in forward or reverse. It wears down your teeth on your sprocket. It's gonna mean you're gonna have to buy a new sprocket at some point quicker than you normally would if it's in off. You'll feel the difference, hard to justify in a video. Another one, <coughs> handbrake's on which is pulled in and locked in. So if you switch it on, there's no there. You switch it off, obviously, oh, sorry, put it in forward and it moves. As soon as that handbrake's on, it's a safety lock. It locks everything off, it won't go anywhere. So always make sure your handbrake's undone in case you think it's not working. It could be something as simple as that. Back into off, quad off. Final one, when you've got it and you've done it, it needs a 12 hour boost charge, even though it might say it's fully uh, charged on your 
battery indicator on the throttle, put it on a 12 hour boost charge, good to go.